For years, I've learned the right way to aim, the good way. But in my unrelenting search for progress, my resolve weakened, and the whispers of the forbidden techniques became all-consuming. Turning my back on the Aimers Guild, I set out to play a single team deathmatch in Apex Legends with each of the three flickshot techniques that were calling to me. The first being the heretical notion of playing exclusively with one motion flickshots, like some kind of automaton. No gradual aiming movements, even when walking around, no rebounds on the flicks, and not using your movement to aim for you. Full disclaimer, the following techniques are not something you should do, I'm calling them forbidden for a reason. This is more about exploring aim. Starting out, it's hard to express just how awkward this felt to do, and a huge amount of my effort was just going towards not breaking those rules. We land a nice shot, but it looks like I rebounded so that's a big no. Flicking up to this guy, it turns out to be a teammate, so I think you can see where my head is at right now. Following this grappling path was tricky, but I could see where he wanted to go, so I had just a moment to line up the shot, which landed in one nice motion. My bird also seemed quite impressed with this, which I considered to be a good omen. After robotically moving through the door, we land a series of one motion flicks, taking down this bloodhound. The initial awkwardness was wearing off, and I started to get a feel for this style. Slowing it down, we really get to see just how it works. I take a moment to determine the crosshair position and the position of my enemy before quickly one motion flicking. But the thing is, like golf, I just have to play from where it lands and because I was trying not to aim with my movement, I couldn't just mirror him for a free hit. Lining up again, we take the shot and clip them as they jump. What's tricky here is that my crosshair is now stuck up in the air and my strafe to the left created some serious distance, leading to a harder shot but that doesn't scare us and we nail it in one nice motion. No rebound, that's just my strafe changing directions. What started with a nice headshot turned into a bit of a mess and I'll show you why. This guy blasts me and it was looking like they'd one clip me if I didn't strafe and this led to them just walking into my crosshair. I think this counts as using movement to aim even though it wasn't my intention. There's limited scripture on the finer details of this forbidden technique, so I'll make the executive decision that every shot needs to be aimed. And if that means strafing away or flicking away to then flick back to the target, so be it. This one's really cool, and not for the shots really, but for the thought process and the latency it was taking to adhere to the rules. As they fall, we land the nice headshot and we see them grav lift up at this angled trajectory, which makes it look like she'll end up here in just a moment. But as she came out from behind the lamp, she had actually straightened up and our flick went to the wrong spot where we thought she was going to be. In these last few shots, they're lined up well enough, but it's just a moment too late each time, which I'm putting down to the conscious effort it was taking to one motion flick without a rebound and to not gradually track her flight. Using this strange style of aim was a good challenge and honestly a lot of fun. It probably deserves more than one TDM though, considering how difficult it is to properly execute. The second forbidden technique I'll explore is using the wingman exclusively with hipfire. ADS is totally banned. The twist here is that I was able to invoke the power of an eldritch crab god by playing revenant with crouch toggle the entire match. The point being, your spread is reduced when crouching, and Revenant in particular has a passive that lets him move quickly while crouched. Plus, I imagine it must look quite bizarre having this crab waddling at you all game. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm the kind of player that basically uses ADS all of the time, even when I probably shouldn't. I've been burned too many times by unlucky hit by a spread, and at least if I ADS, I can own my missed shots. Despite this, my first few fights went quite well, there was this enhanced element of stealth as I scuttled around getting the jump on my opponents. It reminded me a lot of that snail assassin scenario, where if you take the deal, you get millions of dollars in immortality, but an immortal snail that kills you if it touches you will hunt you for the rest of your existence. These players had taken the deal, and instead of a snail, it was a crab with a wingman, and he had finally found his prey. This path comes flying out at me, and after missing a few shots, I have to reload mid-fight. But as I'm shuffling around Crouch, you can just smell the fear on this guy. He's never faced anything quite like it. After some more sneaking, we cleanly execute this player cowering behind cover and do battle with their teammate. Despite the excessive range, the crab comes out on top. 
The thing I noticed with my hip fire, and it's not always just the spread, to be fair, was hitting or missing clusters of shots. Either I was hitting a bunch of shots in a row for a quick kill, or whiffing several and needing to reload. I love this one. The waist high rail gets in the way, but what's important here is that this pathfinder knows I'm here, and that I'm coming for him, it's just a matter of time. I deal with the octane, and the path deals with my teammate, and in this moment he knows the crab is close. He hears me scuttling toward him, yet no amount of money or immortality can save him now. While I don't think I'll be reverting back to regular hipfire use in Apex Legends, this match did show me that it's not as bad as it seems, at least if you're crouched. To be honest, the playstyle of the fast moving crouch was really the highlight for me, more so than any of the actual hipfire kills. The final forbidden technique is that of only going for massive flick shots. The further the distance, the bigger the rebound, the better. And let me tell you now, things got a little crazy. Starting out, we were just testing the waters a little bit. Sure, I rebounded unnecessarily far, but it was a little pathetic. We needed to crank things up a notch. And this Bangalore was the one who copped it. Four huge flicks in a row, and take a look at this bit after the headshot. Our crosser is way too close for a cool shot, so we did the right thing and flicked away, before flicking an entire screen back to finish her off. With our crosser on top of this Pathfinder, we of course flick away, so far that we can only see the tip of their Peacekeeper that's currently blasting a hole in us. This distance is no trouble, and we land some good hits despite the complete chaos. With every flick, I was growing stronger, more dialed in and more confident. We got some nice fast flicks on this Ash, but I noticed I had stumbled into a problem. The first flick would have hit if not for the solid wall, but what's concerning is that I shot too early here. The crosshair lands right on them, but I'd mistimed the shot. And it happened again here. It seems that in my efforts to speed up the longer distance flicks so the enemy doesn't move away during the flick was messing a little with the timing. Fortunately, this was something I managed to figure out quickly enough, and while I missed a few shots here, the click timing was spot on. We land a juicy headshot flick on this Pathfinder. After landing from a jump, our crosshair bounces back up, which led to a tough, off-angled flick over to the path. Despite that, the shot lands which looked really awesome. The key to these long distance flicks is all about where you're looking. Your eyes should be locked to your target, while you use your peripheral vision to gauge where your crosshair is before the shot. This causes a few important things to happen. Focusing on your target makes aiming feel more like you're moving the target to the center of your screen, rather than moving your crosshair to them. That may seem a little cosmic, but that's the sensation you're looking for. And with that, my foray into the dark arts of aiming came to an end. Obviously, these techniques are not advisable, and really it's just a bit of fun. It can be helpful to try weird or very difficult things to gain better perspective, or to understand your limitations, so if there's a positive aiming takeaway from these games, that would be it. If you enjoyed this style of video, I highly recommend checking out this video here, where I only aimed for headshots for 10 days to see how close I could get to the aiming skill cap. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.